Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite the brethren to stand up. And you who are at home, you can remain seated if you want, or you can also stand up if you want. We're going to open our Bibles in Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Matthew 25 from verse 1. It's a little loud, isn't it? I'm hearing an echo here. Matthew 25 from verse 1 says the following. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their, their lamps and went to meet with the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamp and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, the Lord has brought us here. Tonight, to so that we can participate on the service toward to the Lord, and the service and has had its start early this morning, right when the Sunday school was over, and when we began to pray for the service. And throughout the day, the church stayed praying for the service, remained praying for the service, and the Lord brought you here. The Lord brought me here in this place so that we could receive a blessing from Him. There's nothing new. There's no other, we could say, there's no other reason no other intention other than to leave this place blessed by God. And this service, it needs to be amazing. There is a song that says, today the service is going to be amazing. This service needs to be amazing. But in order for this service to be amazing, it is not necessary for the pastor to be present. It's not necessary for the praise group to be present. It's not necessary for you to be present. But it's necessary for God to be present. It's necessary that Jesus comes toward us. It's necessary that the Holy Spirit stays here walking amongst us blessing each one of us. The angels of the Lord by faith are already here ministering the acts of righteousness of the Lord on behalf of His church. And so today, by faith, we are going to leave this place with our lamps empty? No. Filled. We're going to leave this place better than that. We're going to leave this place with our lamps overflowing of oil. That's why the Lord has designed tonight's service all the way from heaven. And that's why we pray to the Lord so that this service may be a wonderful service, a service that is blessed by God. And by faith, we're going to leave this place with a blessing. Because always God shows that the time for the service is a, a time that is set aside for the blessing of God. And the time for the service is a time where God is going to give us more experiences. He's going to study our steps 
is going to renew our faith, is going to increase our faith, is going to renew our fellowship, is going to hear our prayers. We are going to leave this place with the hand of God upon us. Amen. If Jesus comes right now, at this moment, right now, I would say that ninety five more than ninety percent is going to go to heaven. You know why? Because according to the word your lamp is filled with the oil. And this requirement so that you may be able to reach your eternity with God. And that's why I read this parable. And that's where I'm studying this parable. Because we know that there is an importance for us to have lamps, uh, oil in our lamps. The lamp was not made for us to put anything else. The lamp was not designed for us to put a, a jewel or water or to put inside a handkerchief, uh, uh, fashion jewelry. No. The lamp was an instrument that was used all the way in the time of Jesus or maybe a little earlier or afterwards because there was no electricity. There's no way. Like here, you see? Everything is lit. Everybody sees everything. The beautiful, the plants, the children, the flowers. But at that time, this didn't exist. And the lamp needed to have what? Had to have oil. The lamp needed to have oil inside of it. Otherwise, if there was no oil, you would not be able to walk when the sun went down and you would not be able to introduce yourself to anyone or on the road or at home or even inside of your home. So show on the projection here. There it is. You see the lamp? The lamp was individual. It's like a cell phone today. No one lives do you know with that do you leave your home without a cell phone you may even be you know halfway through the place we're going oh hey wait a second i forgot something then you go back home isn't it true you go out without a kidney but you don't go out without uh your cell phone and at that time it was the same thing the lamp was an object that every person had to have And there, look, there is a reservoir where you put inside oil and there was a wick, a piece of cloth that would put all the way inside there. And when you put the fire, this wick, this wick it would be uh, soaked on the oil and there it, it kept the flame always lit. And the wick would never burn because for as long as there was oil, the wick still dampened, would, was would, you know, soaked on oil, would be the channel of connection between the liquid, the oil, and the flame. Who from, from us here uh, lived in a farm and set a, a lamp? It's like this. Yeah, it stunk horribly. When you turn on a lamp at home, oh my goodness, you get the kerosene. At the time, they use it's not oil. The oil it's comes from the olive. At the time, they didn't have kerosene. So you know what they did? They would get the the olives. They would those squash the olives and produce the olive olive oil but in Brazil they used to use kerosene it was easier to acquire and this thing is, stinks so much you put inside of a house that smoke the black smoke would come out on top of the house everything would get dark and smell was horrible it's more or less like this I, I've never seen it because I'm young it's not it's from all my time 
but there is a group here that's seen my grand my great grandfather used to talk about lamb and kerosene I never heard about it. hey Christian yo you gave yourself away it was in the same way that place that it was that thing was the lamp this the lamp would last for two hours if you feel the lamp you put it on the palm of your hand you put the oil inside and you turn and uh, light up the wick and the flame would and that would stay on for two hours that's what I that's why I said that if Jesus comes now with everybody with their lamps lit and we already prayed we sang the praise group sang and all of this if you allow they will sing even more so we are all here with our hearts and with our lamps filled of the blessing of the spirit that's been renewed rejoicing right oh glory to God hallelujah there are a few even that a little lose the sing uh, louder and give glory to God right but how is it going to happen if Jesus comes tomorrow the lamp only lasts two hours whatever you receive today the blessing of God today probably when you get home when you get out and all maybe you get home the husband is upset right or maybe a son is a little and likes to uh, uh, be disobedient or maybe the credit card bill came and it was a big surprise why did you go why this or like that and it sometimes it happens and then the lamp the blessing that God gave you here begins to run out, you know, because the oil goes away. The blessing that we're going to receive here, that we are receiving here, is not going to last forever. There will come a time where you have to put more oil on the lamp so that you can continue and showing yourself to the people, right? And that used to happen a lot. Happen a lot. A person would pick up a lamp. And, uh, today I'm going to the house of this individual, and then they would put this in, in front of their face, and they would, and they would go. And then when they got got to the house of their friend, hey, how good you came? How was the service? It was a blessing? All of this. And then people would put on their houses, there was a place called, uh, there was a place specific that had a, a vessel where you put oil and this bigger lamp would light up the whole house. So whenever you would go to a house where there was no, uh, this larger lamp didn't exist, you had to bring your own lamp. That's why it's so important. That's why Jesus tells this parable because here there were 10 people, 10 women. Five had enough oil and five did not. So when that mo at that moment they, the oil ran out for the ones that didn't have a lamp, didn't have oil, and when the groom returns and they do not have a way to reveal themselves to the groom, and to present themselves to the groom, they found it themselves in a difficulty. But the prudent, the wise ones, they had more than enough oil because the lamp always needed to be refilled. I want to say once again, that's why I said, if Jesus comes now, a lot of people is going to go to heaven. We, and also we, we are here because we have been renewed. But if Jesus returns tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 in the morning, at noon, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., how are you going to be? 
How are you going to present yourself before Jesus? That's a question that all of us will have to answer. Or maybe all of us need to be paying attention to this question. Because no one knows the day that Jesus will return. Nobody knows the time in which Jesus will return. But we who are here, we know of one thing. We need to have enough oil so that our lamps, so that our hearts are filled with the Holy Spirit. Because otherwise it is all worthless. Having a Bible, knowing verses of the Bible, you being called a Christian, it's, un it's going to be worthless. If in the moment of return of Jesus, you are not in fellowship with Jesus, in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So how am I going to do in order to have enough oil? How am I going to do in order to have that oil in my vessels? The church teaches us this. Our service is constant. Our service, not only right now, as we put in practice what God is telling you, as you obey the Lord and as you reject sin and as you say no to sin and that you cancel sin, that you take away the practice of sin from your life, you are maintaining the oil in your vessel. You are buying that oil. You are acquiring oil. You're receiving the Holy Spirit enough oil so that in the moment in, your, in which your lamp is full and you have uh, the level all the way up, then you put more. This is important. So every time that you obey the Lord, you are receiving the Holy Spirit oil from the Holy Spirit. So every time that you consult the Lord, you're receiving the oil. Every time that you offer a, a fast to the Lord, every time that you kneel down and pray to, for the Lord, or pray for the church, or pray for the pastors, pray for the church, or pray for the salvation of souls, or pray for your family, or for your own life, receiving oil from the Holy Spirit. Every time that you seek the Lord independently on the time of the service, you're receiving oil from the part of the Holy Spirit. That's why the service is so amazing. But we cannot come into the house of the Lord with our lamps empty. Every time that you come into the house of the Lord, that you have already prayed for the service and you got prepared, that you are in fellowship with the Holy Spirit and you prepare for the service, you come here with your lamp already lit. And the light that comes out of my lamp and the light that comes out of your own lamp will light up the whole house. And not only you will be blessed, not only you receive more oil so that your lamp will overflow, but the light, which is a revelation of the Holy Spirit, which is the blessing of God, will be able to reach other hearts. People who entered here, desperate, in need of an answer, in need of hearing the voice of God, in need of an embrace from the Lord. People like this, they will receive the revelation regarding the Lord Jesus. And this is our service. You can expect to come here with your lamp empty, already upset, and you're not going to be able to see joy on anything. The song prepared for the bread, they spent the whole morning, didn't even have breakfast. They only got breakfast after they were praying, they were rehearsing, and the praise of this, the children who prayed with joy and sincerity. You're not going to see any joy in it. 
you're not going to receive a blessing of the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because your heart is closed. But if you come here, already prepared for the service, singing songs to the Lord in fellowship with the Lord, the service will be amazing. Independent on the flaws of the pastor, independent of the flaws of the sister or the uh, problem of the microphone or an instrumentalist that makes a mistake, none of it will bother you. None of it will upset you. You know why? Because you come here with your eyes closed and you offer uh, adoration to the Lord. You came here to receive a blessing from the Lord. The service is going to be amazing to all of us because that's what the Lord has for us. But it is necessary for us to have enough oil. Amen? We need to have enough oil. Because the servant of God cannot live off of the service only. Servant of God, here they're called prudent. Here they're called servant, virgin, prudent, wise virgins. People that are prepared to hear the voice of Jesus. They cannot live off of the service only. Because there are people that come to the service Sunday night. They're servants of God. They come on Sunday night. They only go back to the Bible. No. This the other Sunday. You know, there are people that do this. There are people that do this. They come today. So, so. So, so. They come the the reading. They sometimes they read the Bible. They why Bible? They, they don't even have cell phone. They have everything. They Tuesday and Wednesday they have they have uh, study on on Tuesday. They don't even know where they are. See how crazy this is. Some people there are part of the praise group, part of the teachers. I'm not gonna say here because everyone here they, they go. They're our church, everybody comes and everybody participates. But there are churches that I hear pastors talking that the situation is difficult. That they don't show up. The praise group does not appear. The teacher does not appear. And difficult situation. I want to choose a day to study the Bible. So then Wednesday on the meeting for the women. Well, why am I going to read the Bible today? Today is women's service. We don't need to read the Bible. On Thursday... Pray, I'm going to pray. I'm not going to read the Bible. I'm, I'm from the group of this, of, of this, you pray for me. Yeah, you pray for me. Yeah, you pray for me. People like to pray at three or four o'clock in the morning. I, I don't pray, but you pray for me. But then on Saturday, Sunday night is, is day for us to go to the church. So we need to go to church. And they will only remember about the Bible one week later. The Bible is um, covered in, on dust. They put next to their their bed because they think that the Bible is inside like an amulet. And they open the Bible on Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And they leave the Bible open the whole week. We need to have oil. Enough oil for every moment. You know why? Because when the servant of God, when he is considered, he wants to be prudent. He wants to have assurance of salvation. If he wants to have his name written in the book of life, he needs to be prepared at every moment. Because at any moment, at work, on the street, or even in the church, maybe you're here outside. It's you're a terrible person. Outside, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian only inside of the church. Outside, I'm not Christian. I will be Christian only on Sunday and Saturday night. On Thursday night, on the other days, I am who I am. And then the Lord brings 
one of your neighbors here or a co-worker that you never thought about evangelizing, that you never evangelized and never spoke about the Lord to him, never spoke of Jesus to him, never spoke about what God has done for your life. You're a secret agent. Nobody knows you're a Christian. You're a ninja. That thing only, you only appear on the service at night. Outside, nobody knows who you are. Then a relative comes, a friend. Oh, man, you'll be invited as well. Oh, I'm part of the church 30 some years. I'm Maranatha. I have, I have an ID, Maranatha ID. Yeah. Can you imagine? Is this what it is to be prudent? Is this what it is to be considered? Could you consider yourself a, as a prudent person? No. A prudent servant is the one who is always in fellowship with the Lord at every moment, on the street, at home, at work, at school. Because at any moment, the Lord can place on your path someone, uh, make a good meaning. Those may pl place on your path somebody that is in desperation. Somebody needs to hear about Jesus. Somebody needs salvation. Somebody that needs to be delivered. And is at that moment that you're going to speak to that person about Jesus. And that could be that moment soon after uh, the return of Jesus. And you and him are going to go to heaven together. Can you imagine a blessing? Being prudent is this, is to, for you to leave the gospel outside of the church. Being prudent is for you to be a servant of the living God outside of the church, at home, at work, at school, on the street whatever you are. This is what it is to have enough oil, having enough oil on your vessel, what verse 4 says. But, no, actually, verse 3, those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And they were not able to enter. They were called, but did not, they did not enter. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. That's why, my brethren, it doesn't exist, it cannot exist, uh, this thing of uh, playing, like toying with the idea of being a Christian. You know, I'm going to play, I, I'm a Christian, I'm going to be a Christian only when I want. Uh, I'm going to be a servant of God only when I feel like I need something. Then I'm going to run, I'm going to kneel down, I'm going to pr sing songs, but not the servant of God. Servant of God, whatever he passes by, he leaves a trail, a trail of blessings, a testimony that speaks louder. He is, maybe he sleeps, of course, we are all sleep. We all sometimes fall into our own trials and difficulties, but we're going to have an oil enough. But the Holy Spirit is the one that awakens us. And when the Holy Spirit awakens us up, and when He wakes us up from the fall and the sleep up, we're going to be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The servant of God, He needs whatever He is to have enough oil. And for this, you need to be obeying the Lord. That's what the Lord spoke to Cain. When Cain, oh, I'm sad. God accepted the offering of Abel, but did not accept the offering of Cain. And the Lord spoke to Cain, Cain, it's your fault. The scene is at the door. Close the door, Cain. You, my brother and sister, you need to close the door. The door for the world, the door for sin. It's you. It's not the pastor. It's not the brother who is beside you. It's not your husband or wife. No, it is you who have to close the door because sin is at the door. It's right here. Right. They lay down at the door. You know, there is the body of that individual. And the sin is here at our door, knocking, trying to steal your blessing, trying to take you away from you, from your intimacy with God. But the servant of God who has all, that has Holy Spirit that wants to go to heaven needs to close the door 
for the things of the world. He has to have in his heart a lamp lit, the wick there lit, the flame lit, and, and more than enough oil. Because there will come a moment where we're going to uh, refill uh, again. The blessing today it is enough for today, and but tomorrow is another day. And tomorrow you need to be seen by God as the same servant who entered here tonight. The same person, right? Why is that? Because if Jesus comes tomorrow, at any moment, today, at any moment, we will present to the Lord who we are, who we are, and what we have received from the Lord is the blessing from the Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us, and may the Lord speak to our heart, and that this word, this parable here, that was spoken by Jesus regarding these five people, may be bothering your heart and bringing you to leave, have having a new stand before the Lord, not before a church, nor this stand of saying, oh, I'm a servant only on this environment here. No, but you may be seen by God wherever you are, and that you may be pleasing the Lord, and that we may find grace in God's eyes. Amen. Let us hear a song.
Seja o teu nome, Senhor. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Let's stand up, my brethren. The Lord was showing that while we were praying for the service, the Lord has shown that somebody would enter here, a woman. She was invited. And it was seen a letter that would connect the church to heaven. And this woman, she was invited to go up on this step ladder, and she accepted the invitation, but she wanted to bring with her a few things on her back, and was told to her that she should, that would not, it was not necessary for her to carry anything else but her own life, her heart. And on this climbing, she didn't would not need of anything uh, from this life and she would let go of this weight extra weight and then she would climb up on those step ladders so it's not necessary for us to take anything from here to our life with god it's only necessary for you to open up your heart and to let jesus enter the word says that you come as you are Let go of your of memories and things of this life, and you receive from the part of the Lord everything that you need in a new life. In Jesus, everything is be made new. In Jesus, we are new creations. And I, the Lord says, I uh, don't remember your sins anymore. And the Lord also has shown another man in a spiritual gift. He made an action was a betrayal but he has already repented and now he feels like he's not worthy of seeking the Lord anymore because of his disobedience and his act but the Lord is telling look I, I do not reject you but there is a warning so that he should run away from sin a servant of God he needs to run away from sin the practice of sin is what leads men to hell right there is power in the blood of Jesus of course we believe in this absolutely we preach this and we leave this with the servant of God that pleads for the blood of Jesus but continues in the practice of sin he cancels uh, many things so amen you made a mistake recognize your mistake ask forgiveness from God and life continues but run away from sin go and sin no more isn't it what Jesus said amen glory to God the Lord was already showing also showing in a spiritual gift there were many spiritual gifts this morning. I hope I don't make a mistake here. There was a person that went here in the service, and she said on her own heart that there was no solution for her life anymore. So the person that is completely without faith, without a, a direction, and upset, but through the praise of the church, the Lord was going to give to this person a blessing of salvation. It's uh, actually it's a man. In this revelation, uh, the Lord has said it is, and actually a man, a man that came without any direction, not believing on anything. But the Lord is giving you another opportunity, so that you may may be counted as a servant of God, as saved in Jesus. The Lord is also also showing a, a vision of a man. I saw a man. On the pulpit, or next to the pulpit, a heavenly in individual that came from heaven, and he bought a canister with many gifts, and we all receive those gifts. 
and the individual, he would open up the canister and would give to each one of us the gifts that were inside. Things of gold and precious stones. It is all in the spiritual sense, right? And the children would also receive those gifts from the part of the Lord. But many do not want uh, this, and they would. They many thought that the the gifts they were unnecessary or maybe too big. They didn't want. They would reject the gifts. They would actually return the gifts. But don't do this. Do not cancel and all the blessing of God. In your, with your actions, with your thoughts, with your human reason. This is all in spiritual sense. Do not cancel the effect of the Word of God. Do not cancel the spiritual gifts that the Lord has already gave to your life. Do not annul this. Take seriously the advices of the Lord. Uh, put in practice in your life the good advice from the Lord. If the Lord has already given you an alert, if the Lord has already spoken to you in a way that to put you in a in a direction that is op opposite to the way you were going, accept this because this comes from God. The good advices of the Lord, they are they have the purpose to bring us to have salvation in Christ, put into practice what you are living in the presence of the Lord. What you hear here, what you have received from the Lord, put in practice in your life, in your tomorrow, in your daily life, so that your vessel may be filled with the lamp, uh, with, the, with the oil, extra oil. The Lord also has shown a man that has brought with him memories from a difficult life and even scars and traumas of things that have already happened, sadnesses, uh, sadding things in the family, in every aspect. But the Lord knows that you recognize God's power and that you need to be you need to depend on the Lord. There's no other way. There is no other fashion for you to get into the presence of God. There is upsetting things of this life, traumas, sadness, bitterness. Leave it all behind. This will only bring even more sadness, more distancing from your family, more isolation in your life. Come into the presence of God. Exchange what you, you had with the, the things of Jesus, right? The yoke that Jesus is light. Exchange it. And tonight, place in God's altar what you already lived and received from the Lord, a new life. Amen. Let's bring the service to a close and soon, if you want, if you desire, we want to pray for you so that you may receive from the Lord the blessing, the complete blessing, and that the oil of God, the oil of the Holy Spirit, you may be overflowing with this oil in your heart, in your life. Amen. Oh God, we want at this moment praise your name, Lord, and ask that you may cause that your word may generate life in the hearts. Uh, the ones who came up to your house, Lord, we ask that we may receive the portion that we need by faith. We know that your Holy Spirit has visited our hearts and that your Spirit has given us a new opportunity and that we are going to leave this place loving more salvation in Jesus. Receive our praise. Receive, Lord, our adoration. And give us a week of victories in your presence. It's a prayer that we say, already thankful in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in your name we say, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit, may be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated.
we are going to, at this moment, if you want prayer, we are here at your disposal. Just raise your hand or ask someone beside you to raise their hand on your behalf. We want that you receive from the Lord the blessing that you need and to all the peace of the Lord.